Hello, all my beautiful Piscean friends. This is Maxine Taylor, and I've got your forecast. I hadn't forgotten about you. You know, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, and some Pisceans get upset because it, of that fact. Well, just think of it as saving the best for last, okay? All right, I've got a couple of announcements that I want to share with y'all. And then I will show you your um, awesome forecast. So a lot of people have uh, told me that they want to be an astrologer. Can I help them do that? The answer is yes, absolutely. Um, I want to create as many uh, astrologers who come from love as I possibly can. I was told that this is what I'm supposed to do. One of the things and so I'm happy to do it naturally. Um, and so I'm going to be offering a couple of different things. Number one, I'm resurrecting my one-on-one um, uh, -on -one sessions, my mentoring sessions, because a lot of people wanted that. They didn't want to sit in on a class. They just wanted the information, and they wanted to be able to talk to me on the spot. That is, is certainly one of the things that I can do to help people at their own pace, okay? If, they're, uh, if the class is moving too slowly, you know, that gets old to somebody who gets it really quickly. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I am going to be offering another course comprised of three classes, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, takes about nine months to get through it. And it I create a team of people who can rely on each other and buddy with each other and study together over the internet. It's really worked out beautifully. Um, so that's the astrology. All the information on how to get to me is on my um, website. My suggestion is uh, shoot me an email Give me your contact information, and I'll get back in touch with you so that I can answer all of your questions. Then, my latest book, Secrets from the Womb. I am going to be offering classes on this. Um, as many of you know, I received all the information from God that um, is here. I asked, and I got the answers it absolutely changed my life, and I wanted to share it with people. And some people are ready, and some people are not. If you are ready, um, I will be offering the actual sessions th that will help you move through quickly, easily, and painlessly. Um, and what I am also doing for those people who I have worked with, um, is set up um, a team that meets, doesn't have to be forever, um, but it meets and discusses what's going on in their respective arenas. Um, and I, I see it, I've seen it become a blending of like-minded people. I, I'm interviewing all of the prospective students so that they are all harmonious and know how to play well with other children. So if you're interested in my training for Secrets from the Womb, just um, send me an email with your contact information and I will get back with you. Okay. Now let's give you what you came for, which is a beautiful forecast. Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, let's talk about this. Jupiter is getting ready to go retrograde on the ninth. Jupiter is the greater benefic. It rules abundance. It rules God. It rules truth. It rules long distance uh, transportation. Uh, it, it, it's, it's the good guy. 
Venus is the lesser benefic. There's nothing lesser about Venus. It's love, it's money, it's art, it's beauty. These are the two good guys of the Zodiac. So let's just start with Jupiter. It's down here in your fourth house. And I put it retrograde because it's in the shadow right now. And for all intents and purposes, it is retro. Um, you'll find that you might want a bigger house. If you're in real estate, this can be very helpful to you. But when Jupiter goes direct, which it will in a few months, that's when you'll really see uh, a coming together of family members, uh, a bigger house, if you want one, that type of thing. I love it. Now, Mars, the red planet. In the fifth house of fun, Mars rules passion. In the fifth house of fun, this can talk about a great deal of social and sexual activity. Um, it can also represent your first child. I don't mean in, in a sexual way, but that that child is putting themselves first. And it's hard to deal with a kid who's putting himself first. I use the word uh, he here generically. Um, he's ready to have fun. And sports. Mars you know, rules. Uh, it doesn't rule all sports, but the violent ones, it does. Mars in the fifth wants to party. He wants it out there and let's just go and do and and have a good time. I think that's very good. I wish I had all that play in me. I'm a work I'm a work person as you probably could figure out. Okay. And this Mars in the 5th means if you have a child, he might go toe to toe with you. Okay? Now, the sun is the yellow planet. Um, it's in your eighth house of secrets and transformation and transmutation. It can help you with other people's money, joint finances. Your ego is undergoing a change. And I would use the eighth house here, which is secrets, to get answers to anything relating to joint financial ventures or just anything about yourself that you want to better understand. On the 22nd, the sun moves into your ninth house and says, I got my answers. I'm not going back there. Let's go forward. And this can help bring about uh, higher education classes, uh, travel, long distance travel, and uh, nowadays, when we say long distance travel, I'm thinking space travel. We have it. Um, so the sun in the ninth house says you are taking a stand for your principles and encouraging yourself to listen to them. I love that. Mercury, the blue planet, your conscious mind, it too is undergoing a change. Um, and on the 13th, it moves into your ninth house because it, it too says, I got my answers and I want to put them into action. And it can be, you know, having a round trip airline ticket to someplace you've always wanted to go. Venus is love. Venus is the lesser benefic. And there's nothing less about Venus. So kind of a misnomer. Um, Venus loves truth when it's in the ninth house. And when it moves into the 10th house, you are seen as a loving leader. Isn't that gorgeous? It's beautiful. And you're loving your career. It couldn't be better. Now, we have a new moon on the 2nd. Just prior to the new moon, for about two days, we have no moon at all. It's the dark of the moon, and energy is very, very low. Um, 
the the eclipse is the part that is powerful here. It's not just a new moon. It is a solar eclipse. And that means that the um, energy from this eclipse is going to last probably a year, unlike a, a regular eclipse that is shorter. This eclipse will take place October 2nd, and it's in 10 degrees of Libra. Directly across the chart, we got a full moon on the 17th of the month in your second house of money. And on the full moon, everything comes to a head. Don't you love it? Um, it lands. Can't read my own handwriting, of course. Ah, it's 24 Aries, 35. And so find 24 Aries um, in your birth chart. Combine it with this um, full moon that emphasizes your income, your money, and brings it to a head. Um, and just visualize it being really nice, really good. Um, and that's what's activated. So, quite a, a lovely, lovely forecast. So, that's that's all for now. Um, join me next month when, once again, I take a ride around the Zodiac. Until then, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.